What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com alongside Katie Lobliner. Fake weights, fake news, fake social media. Woo, man, there was an article that came out, Katie, in the failing New York Times, as our commander-in-chief calls it, and I tend to believe that this article is not fake news. It is not fake news. I believe we've uh, had a false expectation of what really goes on in social media, and some of the largest social media influencers are actually, are actually faking it till they make it, buying their followers, and somebody even as well-known who's been around as long as Kathy Ireland has been involved in this. I would like to throw out the accusation that a lot of YouTubers and fitness insta hoes and insta bros are doing this as well. Katie, you read the article. You, um, I, I, re I read you some of it. Yeah. What are your thoughts to this? Like, you see people, tremendous followings, right. tremendous, tremendous followings. And you're like, wait a second. They're also getting tremendous likes. I used to think that you could take the followers and then deduce the likes and figure out. Oh, so that's not the case. You can't, because you can buy, the article. you can buy likes too. So what these people have been doing is, let's say they put, for example, Clay Aiken, I believe, he was actually going against somebody, um, trying to defame him publicly. He paid a social media bot company to keep retweeting it and make it seem like it had more traction yeah. than it actually did. So this is being used for many different bad things. It's also being used to rip off sponsors, which is crazy. So I guess then the best way to check something is if they do some kind of post where there's a call to action, like tag two people and share this or something like that, maybe that would be a, a ID, you know, show if it's legit. Maybe, because I bet you there's a way to do this. Now, there is a company uh, that was written about this article in the New York Times. I'm going to link it down below. There is a company called Davumi. Davumi, I believe it's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And they basically would sell for pennies, literally less than a penny you could buy a follower or a bot. And they basically were a farm where they collect all these created high quality bots is what they call them. And these high quality bots would retweet, like, share, and do all this. And they looked real because a lot of them actually took real people and just changed one character in their name. Whoa. In the fitness industry, I call bullshit on a lot of accounts. For example, there's people who put up, they're really not interesting videos and there's not a ton of, uh, of interaction going on in them and their Instagram doesn't, that's the thing, does their Instagram match their Twitter? Does their Twitter match their YouTube? Are they buying in all of them? But you have some people out of nowhere getting like 300, 400,000 um, views on these topic videos and it makes guys like me who've never bought a subscriber and actually never knew this really existed until I found out about it last year. Um, and, and let me explain to you um, kind of conversions and how, you know, because I did get accused of buying subscribers because we have almost 300, we're, we're 2,000 shy of 350,000 subscribers. Yet our videos, including this one, range between 2,000 and 2 million views. It just depends. I am not a vlogger, okay? Casey Neistat, um, Christian Guzman, those are guys who are vloggers, people watch their vlogs, they're interested in everything they do, it's a lifestyle. For me, I hit topics, and I hit many topics because as I've said before, the goal of this YouTube channel is not to build the biggest following ever, it's to act as a customer service arm to Tiger Fitness. Not even quality, I mean, there's videos that are better edited and better put together than ours, no, obviously. Kind of quality. quality would be Content information. Quality. I want people, I want to help people reach their goals, that's our company mission, I'm not trying to do some strength product Project type stuff where I have people putting on gorilla head masks and running around and doing curls. That's not what we do. That's not our mission. That's not that's not how we've you know um, we envisioned this channel and and I still don't. And that's why even the vlogs are now on another channel, the Mark Lobliner, the Ghetto Channel, youtubecom slash Lobliner. So in sales, if I was to pick up a phone and make sales calls, I had a good product. If I was to convert twenty percent of people to buying that product. It's a phenomenal close rate. That's an unheard of close rate. If you are sitting at 100,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, and you get 2,000 views on that on your average video, 
That's not a bad ratio because not all your videos, if you're a topic-based YouTuber, are going to be seen by all. For example, I've done videos on female menstruating cycles. Do you really think being a 90, 93%, I believe we are, female base? A male, I'm sorry, male dominated, <laughs> male dominated demographic that the men are even to give a shit. No. no, but it's a question we get asked, so we answer it. Mm -hmm. I don't care who watches it. I don't look at the numbers. I don't. Um, it's not. We're not aiming to pay our bills with this. This is something to help drive people to the site and also to help our current existing customers. So let me read this to you, Katie. This is where it gets weird. I was actually talking, if you look at someone who is, is, is a, a great example of growing organically, Kara Corey. Kara Corey, um... Grinded for years. What? Grinded yeah. for years. Kara Corey Fit Life. She's been grinding for years. Check this out. High follower counts are also critical for so-called influencers. A budding market of amateur telemakers and YouTube stars where advertisers now lavish billions of dollars a year on sponsorship deals. The more people influencers reach, the more money they make. According to data collected by Captivate, a company that connects influencers to brands, an influencer with 100,000 followers might earn an average of 2,000 for a promotional tweet, while an influencer with a million followers might earn 20,000. So think of it this way, if they're investing $2,000 to get literally, for $2,000, you get like 20, 30, 40,000 followers or subscribers on YouTube. You're making, for a promotional tweet, promotional video, or just a video where you mention their product, you can make upwards of 2,000 to 20, thousand dollars so the, the the roi the return on investment is there it's just how big of a scumbag are you yeah, to do that's that? fucking shady <laughs> it is and here's a here's another example and i i gotta say when i was a kid and i don't even know if you know this because you know uh, kelly from saved by the bell i mean tiffany amber Thiessen was uh, had a key to my heart and my masturbatory fantasies when i was a kid uh, kathy ireland i actually had a huge crush on i used to masturbate to the jc penny catalog when i was a child i was what She's hot, man. She was old. No, was she in Sears or she had her own like bra line, man? She looks a lot like you, in my opinion. Yeah, I can't help you there. Okay. Yeah, I think they both sort of. Have but she's like 72 years old, so. Uh -huh. At least I can't get her pregnant. Well, I can't anyway. Anyway, never mind. Miss Ireland has over a million followers on Twitter, which she often uses to promote companies with whom she has endorsement deals. Mm -hmm. The Wisconsin-based American Family Insurance, for example, said that former model was the most influential Twitter brand ambassadors, celebrities who are paid to help promote products. But in January last year, Miss Ireland had only about 160,000 followers. The next month, an employee at the branding agency she owns, Sterling Winters, spent about $2,000. $2,000 is all she spent. $2,000. For checking out. 300,000 more followers. You ever see these Insta hoes and Insta bros with like 2 million followers and their content is shit? It's not. Kind of fishy. <sighs> like Kathy Ireland it smells a little fishy down there, you know what I'm saying? The employee later made more purchases. He acknowledged the interview, but Miss Ireland's Twitter following appears to be consistent of bots. A Times and Allison found. So, what I'm getting at is if you have a YouTuber who has 350, 400,000 subscribers and gets. A good amount of views, let's say two to, again, it depends on the topic, two million. If it's clickbaity or not, whatever. If you have someone who came out of nowhere and literally is all of a sudden getting eight billion, oh, they just blew up out of nowhere. I think it's a constant grind. There are your certain phenomenons, you know, and I'm not debating. I think like Guzman, I think his shit is 100% legit. Casey Neistat, um, PewDiePie before he got caught up being racist or whatever the fuck he did. Um, I think those are, he did like a little skin on something. I don't even know who he is. I, yeah, PewDiePie is the, he's the king of vlogging on YouTube. Okay. So here's the deal. Those guys, I believe, are 100% legit, but they're vlogging type people. If you have someone who's a, a topic based or someone who just out of nowhere has, has a, uh, uh, a mediocre physique or just a normal or even above average or phenomenal physique, but all of a sudden they go from zero to 100,000 real quick, real fucking quick. That's when you have issues, and that's the that's when I think your red flag needs to go up. Now, if you like what they're doing, that's fine. Keep watching them, keep subscribing. But I, I don't think that it's fair. Like you have someone like Kara, who I believe is is at or near one hundred thousand subscribers, but she's been grinding and putting out. Her her husband Jason has some of the best editing. Yeah, they have all factors. She's a registered dietitian. 
Okay. She's brain. She's a professional um, bikini, a natural bikini pro. Beauty. And she's <laughs> and, and, and she's she's been grinding, but they're not buying that stuff. Yeah. You know, they're not buying it. She has some videos at hundreds of thousands of views, and that's how it goes. But she earned those views. They don't buy them. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I was talking to Jason. I don't know if I'm supposed to say, but he's like, that just sounds like cheating. They would have a moral right. issue with doing that. But the thing is, Instagram and social media has det- detached us from any bit of concept of reality where we have this pseudo um, persona online. And we go out there and we believe that, hey, you know, that's just me promoting myself. That's me being me. But the same people that are buying these followers and everything are probably the same ones that you're saying, oh, you're so real, bro. You're so real. You know, you're just real. real at, the, at the at the end of the day, and, and I believe some of these people get caught up in it. And, and, and it, it is true, though. People do place, I got to admit, ever since I got my check mark, my, my verified, I do get more questions and I do have more validity on the social media. So I believe that there is numbers before num- numbers before um, respect kind of thing where if you have a thousand followers and you say something they won't listen as much as if you have a hundred thousand two hundred thousand so on the same token I said I wouldn't do this because I don't find it to be morally acceptable and it's also ripping off your sponsors because they're paying for what you paid for bots does uh when people do this when they buy users and likes does it help them come into the top you know how like on instagram absolutely the top pictures and all that so then they're yeah. getting more visibility and they get yeah. paid on youtube because it's still a view right so it literally is a phenomenal investment it is it is but it's a dishonest investment and like i tell people all the time i could start a sarms company tomorrow i have all the contacts um and make millions of dollars duck out and not do it anymore and get out before i get in legal trouble But the bottom line is, that's not something I want to do. So if you're a YouTuber watching this, if you are one who does it, shame on you, but I understand why you're doing it. It's not for me. But just realize that if you choose to do this, you're not only deceiving yourself, you're deceiving others. It is a shortcut. It's a shortcut that I believe works well. But sooner or later, YouTube, tw- Twitter cannot catch up to it. Twitter has been trying to get rid of this. Twitter has been trying their best, especially with the whole Russia thing, the Facebook and the and the election, the 100,000 people, bots, whatever. It's it's like the technology is ahead of what they can do to um, to fix it. So... It's up to it's up to us to kind of if you see a sudden spike in someone, I think it's complete. It's usually going to be complete bullshit. It takes a while to build up a channel. Like you're like, well, you're at three three fifty. You must have bought them. No man, I've just been grinding. I didn't even know this shit existed for so long, <laughs> and I got because other channels were growing so much because they were buying shit. They assumed that because my views were at this level, my subscribers were at this level, that I paid for subscribers back in the day. But honestly, my you should probably use my video views versus subscribers. The ratio ratio is almost like a prototype because I put out constant content and it varies based on who it's going to appeal to. Right. But again, vloggers, different story. It's a whole different ball game. Your Casey's, your Guzman's, your, your, um, your PewDiePie's, those are a whole different ball game, but a content marketer, a content YouTuber like me, nah, so now you can look at social media stuff and be skeptic about if it's real or not. Always question shit that doesn't make sense. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Do you care? I don't care. Go I'm, still, I'm still going to watch. <laughs> I'm still going to watch the people. I still do watch the people who I like, who I'm pretty damn certain are buying likes um, because I find them great. I find them entertaining. Um, And their way to get notoriety and to get noticed is to have fake numbers. That's just my, that's not my game. It's not my game. But if it's not my game, it's not a game! See how I did that? Yeah, I know.